Hi guys, welcome to Talking Money with Nozi, personal finance made simple. Today's video is about building my Australian dividend portfolio using dividend ETFs and shares. But just in case you were wondering, the stock market is not the only place where I allocate my money. It is just one out of four places where my money goes every single month. The four places where my money goes are number one, my emergency savings fund. I aim to save about 12% of my income for emergencies every month. There are two places where I save for emergencies. The first is my Time Bank Gold Save account. The second is my Standard Bank Money Market account. The second place where my money goes is the RSA Top Up Bond. My goal is to invest 500 Rand every month for the whole year. If you don't know what RSA Top Up Bonds are and how to invest in them, please watch my video about that by clicking this link over here. The third place is my retirement annuity. I have a monthly 1000 Rand debit order for my Signia retirement annuity and I plan to add additional lump sums whenever I get extra money from my gigs throughout the year. The fourth place where my money goes is investing in stocks and ETFs on the stock market. My goal is to invest about 46% of my income on the stock market every month for the whole year. For my end of January slash beginning of February investments, which I'm going to show you in a moment, I'm going to start building up my dividend portfolio in the Australian stock market. Last year, I went all in on the American stock market, but this year I am switching things up to the Australian stock market. Firstly, it's because the Australian dollar is cheaper than the US dollar. And secondly, I also found that Australian dividend yields on average are much higher than American dividend yields. But guys, please remember that dividends are not the only thing to look for when you're choosing your investments. The companies that you choose should be profitable, have low debt levels and have reasonable dividend payout ratios. As usual, I'm going to allocate more money to ETFs compared to individual shares because that's just how I roll, right? I must admit though, I am still a bit torn about not focusing on the US market this year. First of all, the US is a dominant economic superpower and their stock market is the biggest in the world. Secondly, there are so many good quality companies that are known all over the world to choose from. You know, companies like Apple, McDonald's, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Mastercard, Google, etc. The third thing is that it is super easy to do research on the American stock market, guys, because all eyes are on the American stock market, right? So there are lots and lots of websites and heaps and heaps of data that make it so easy to study and find good companies. But with smaller stock markets, it's like, oh, it's almost as if nobody cares. And it's a bit difficult to do research because it's it's harder to find information. I'm not saying it's impossible to find it, but it's just hard. And the websites that are really good are few and far between. Anyway, moving along, another thing that I wanted to mention is that the 2024 tax year starts on the 1st of March, 2023. Remember, a tax year starts from the 1st of March of one year and ends 28 February the following year. So the 2024 tax year starts 1 March, 2023. It's going to end 28 February. 2024. The beginning of a tax year is important because people with pension funds or retirement annuities, tax-free savings accounts can start making deposits again if they had maxed them out in the previous tax year. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with my TFSA because I reached my 36,000 deposit limit in June 2022 and I haven't been able to make any more deposits into my TFSA since then. If you haven't maxed out your TFSA for the 2023 tax year, I encourage you to do so before 28 February 2023, which is when the tax year ends. And just to clarify, a lot of people always ask me what would happen to their TFSA if they don't max it out, right? If they don't reach 36,000 Rand for a particular tax year. So let's say for the entire 2023 tax year, you only manage to deposit and invest 5,000 Rand into your TFSA. What's going to happen to your unused 31,000 deposit limit, right? The 
answer is that your unused deposit allowance is not carried over into the next tax year. So when 1 March 2023 comes, all of us, our TFSA allocations go back to 36,000. You're not going to be allowed to have extra allowance because you didn't meet the target last year. So if you didn't meet the target, sorry, you're going to be only allowed to put in 36,000 rand, not 36,000 plus any additional unused limits from previous years. That's not how it works. So as I have said, starting on the 1st of March, 2023, I'm going to reduce the amount going to my Australian investments and divert it into my Easy Equities TFSA, invest there until I reach the tax year limit of 36,000 rand. I plan to reach my TFSA limit within three months. So it means I'm going to reach my limit in May 2023. Then from June 2023, I'm going to continue building my dividend portfolio using Australian stocks and ETFs. So why am I focusing on building a dividend portfolio? It's because a dividend portfolio is one of the simplest ways to earn passive income and grow wealth over the long term. By investing in a diversified mix of stocks and ETFs that pay dividends, I want to benefit from the growth potential of the stock market while also receiving regular dividend payments. This will hopefully provide a level of financial stability and security for my future. How am I going to choose the right stock? stocks and ETFs. When building a dividend portfolio, it's important to choose a mixture of stocks and ETFs that align with your investment goals. Personally, I prefer investing in low cost diversified ETFs as well as blue chip stocks that have a history of paying reliable dividends. What is a blue chip stock? Blue chip stocks are usually reliable, stable, well-known companies that are able to make profits and keep paying dividends in good times as well as bad times. I'm also going to reinvest all the dividends that I'm going to earn. This is called dividend reinvestment, where you use your dividend payments to buy more shares and more ETFs, helping to compound your returns over time. With all of that said, let me show you my Australian investments for this month. All right, guys, I've already logged into my Easy Equities account and today I'm going to be investing 1,082 Australian dollars. So let's get right into it. I already have some investments in my account. So I'm going to add only two new investments today. So first I'm going to start with ETFs. Of course, ETFs are my go-to. And today I'm going to add Vanguard Australian Shares Index. This is an ETF with 300 Australian shares. So I'm going to buy more. And as usual, I have predetermined how much I'm going to invest in advance. So I'm going to invest $382.30 worth of VAS. That's the ticker symbol. So guys, stocks and ETFs have got the long name and they also have the short name. The short name is called the ticker symbol. So as you invest more and more, you get used to ticker symbols. So Vanguard Australian Shares Index ETF is actually called VAS for short. So there we go and only buy at ask, place by order. The second ETF that I'm going to buy is actually in my watch list. So if I click on invest now, you will see it in my watch list. Here it is. This is the Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield ETF. So what is this ETF? This ETF has got 74 companies in it. Those 74 companies were selected based on high dividend yields as well as quality characteristics as well. It's also low cost. Remember guys with ETFs, I always choose ETFs that are low cost. So the TER or the management fee is 0.25% for the Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield ETF or VHY for short. And I'm going to buy $500 worth of VHY. Only buy at ask and place by order. Okay, those are the two ETFs I'm happy. So most of my money has gone to them. The remainder, which is $200, is going to go to individual shares. So I'm going to buy 10 shares at $20 each. So let's get started. I'm actually going to add onto my existing company. So I'm going to start with BHP Bulletin. Buy more and I'm going to buy $20 worth of BHP. Only buy and ask, place, buy, order. Next, I'm buying Harvey Norman or HVN for short. Buy more, $20 worth. 
only buy at ask place by order next i'm buying jbh or jb hi-fi buy more twenty dollars worth as well place by order next macquarie or mqg buy more place by order next is rio tinto buy more only buy at ask place by order next is sonic healthcare buy more twenty dollars worth only buy at ask place by order next is super retail group buy more twenty dollars only buy at ask place by order next is west farmers buy more twenty dollars worth only buy at ask and place by order next is woodside energy buy more twenty dollars only buy at ask place by order lastly is another stock but it's in my watch list so let's go to my watch list and codan so i'm going to buy codan twenty dollars worth only buy and ask and place by order let's have a look at my account overview i know that some of these shares haven't executed yet so there's pending orders for the orders that haven't gone through okay looks like all of them haven't gone through i'll leave them as is and when the price is matching the trigger price matches or is below then the orders will be executed okay guys that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it and learned something new if you have any questions or comments about this video please type them in the comment section below and i'm going to get back to you also if you are brand new to investing and you don't know where to start you don't know where to go please go over to my online store and get yourself a copy of my ebook guides for beginners they're going to guide you step by step until you become an investor again i'm going to leave the link to my online store in the description and comment section below as always please like this video and subscribe to my channel i'm going to see you in the next video bye guys